Day two of the stay at home order. It's Sunday. So this morning we're getting ourselves all dressed up. We're having our in home altar server prepare the area where we're going to have our TV mass. And I'm having my teenage son, who's an usher, uh, he's going to greet us into the room when it's time to go in. And we have. Um, exercise mats laid out for kneelers. I have a coffee table that's covered in a linen, a light colored linen, and it has a crucifix in the middle, two candles on each side, and then Mary to the left and Joseph to the right, and Bible at center. We have a family Bible that has, it's a really huge one with um, all Jesus's words in red and I'll open that up to the gospel and have it there for them to pour over during that time. Um, and then the TV right now, um, as we're preparing, um, some people are preparing breakfast to have it ready for when we're done with mass. The, um, the TV is set on YouTube where we have our mass um, with our church or other churches that we join in with. And the... Before that, we have Lent music playing because it is still Lent. Um, sometimes it's so overwhelming with all the news to remember that um, we're still in the season of Lent. And it's, it's perfect timing, honestly, um, for everybody to settle down and not be distracted and really focus in on their faith and other things that are important. Um, so we have our Lent music playing in the background to greet everybody for the morning. Um, we'll ring our bell that we have in our home for starting our day. Um, different times of the day I ring the bell to alert everybody to come together. So we'll ring that um, just like they would at church. So there's all these little things we can do that can clue our family in to what um, this day is to remind us, even if we're not leaving the house, that it's still uh, a day to praise and worship God. There will probably be some, just a little bit of chores today, just because we've gotten a little bit relaxed around here and things are falling apart a little bit, but not too bad. The more that we embrace Catholic minimalism, the more we are uh, less overwhelmed by our house and our things because we're getting rid of all those things that drive us bonkers. And the kids have less and they appreciate it and they take care of it and have, know where its place is. Um, if we're overwhelmed by something, we've learned to that maybe it's time to let that go or let something else go so it can have a proper place. And we've done pretty good, so... Our Lent has been peaceful with or without the virus and the stay-at-home order. Uh, but this has been nice. With a large family, Sundays are usually chaotic. Getting everybody up and ready and fed and um, to have a prayerful time. We never did morning Mass. Um, we would usually go to Sunday night Mass because then we've had plenty of time to get ourselves ready and absorb what's going on and have some time together as a family. And then we would wrap up our day with the mass. But now that we're not worried about having to go anywhere and we could just kind of take our time in the morning, we don't have to be so particular. Um, we can just turn on a recorded mass when we're ready. Then that has been a blessing in this time for us to just greet each other and be pleasant to each other and be a little more slow paced and ease ourselves in, in respectfully. Um, so I hope everybody else has found um, a new appreciation for their Sundays. We are um, certainly liking this. And maybe we will set up a good pattern over the next few weeks that when we are able to go back to our church for Mass, um, maybe we'll be more inclined to do a morning Mass because we've 
we've kind of got a, a routine down to do that. So my update was is yesterday. It was okay. It was okay. Um, I was feeling a little off, but um, I think it was just tired. Just tired, and um, my digestive system was a little off, and we just kind of took it as a day to chill. My husband did not. I'll say that for him. Um, he just, like, ramped up his, like, get her done mode and um, took down some Christmas decorations that were still up kind of in a hidden spot and um, did a lot of vacuuming cleaning out under couch cushions it was a spring cleaning kind of feel around here um, so we'll wrap that up today uh, and we just kind of ended the day with um, a movie and um, Tom and Jonathan, they went to adoration late at night and he told me this morning that there were, including them, there was nine people in there in adoration last night when they went late in the evening. And that is just, that's beautiful. That's just so beautiful. One more would have been maxed out for what we're allowed. Um, but I just think that's incredible. We did adoration at home through the TV, but it's truly, it's not the same as being right there a few feet away from Jesus in the presence of the Eucharist. So I was glad that they took that opportunity to go while we're still allowed. Um, yeah, that was good. Yesterday, I must say, was an absolute... On the edge of our seats yesterday... In the morning time, Noah, we were vacuuming the one room, the TV room, and I put Noah, who was a little scared about that, in the laps of my two littles who were watching Paw Patrol. And so they were totally glued to that while we vacuumed. He got out. I set up the floor with all of Noah's toys. Mind you, he's just a little over one. And so... He was anxious to come down and play. He jumped out of their arms, landed face first, knocked the wind out of himself. Um, of course, I picked him up and looked at him, and he was gasping for air. <sighs> Guardian angel, Holy Spirit, somebody said, just blow in his face. And I blew in his face really hard, and, and he took a big breath. And then he just stared for the longest time. I took him over to the patio door and um, let him have some fresh air. And because uh, we were both feeling pretty warm. So I did that and he was just still staring and his lips were going gray. My PTSD. I'm telling you this. This is something that is a big sacrifice in in my life to offer up to God to 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 give him 100% trust that he's going to take care of my family. And I just went to like nurse mode, like mama nurse. Like what do we got to do? Okay, let's not call the ER, let's call the clinic and just tell him what happened. Um he was starting to come to, Michaela started feeding him some applesauce which he took, but he was still kind of staring, still kind of gray. Um and so I like, what's going to make him change his demeanor? So I sing, baby shark, do, 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 do. You know, mom's worst song. Like, please don't sing that song. So I sang that to him, and he got this big smile on his face. And that just brought joy to the whole family, that he was okay. That he was just in shock and taking it in. And um, his lips got rosy again, and he calmed down. And we talked to the doctor on the phone who just told us what to look for. Um, to, it's okay to let him take a nap. It's okay um, to let him play. Just hold back. Don't let him get crazy. And just like that, he returned to his normal self. Um, but my mama heart was like on edge all day. The adrenaline rush from that moment just 
turned into nausea for the rest of the day. Um, my Eddie, when he was about that age, fell off the end of a hotel bed, knocked the wind out of himself, and didn't act like he was coming to for quite a while till the ambulance came um, to our motel room, I should say. Um, that was terrifying. Um, Molly fell off um, a footstool when we were in Florida. And she just acted stunned for a long time. And we took her to the emergency room down there. And they did all sorts of tests and an MRI and everything. And that was terrifying. Then most of you know that I performed CPR on Eddie again when he was five. And he didn't make it. So... I'm always on edge, really. I'm so scared that something's gonna happen to one of my kids. But in that moment, I just, I'm like, I trust you, Lord. Whatever happens, I'm trusting in you. Just help me be what I need to be in this moment. Tell my kids. And I tell you, every little cry he made through the day, you know, if he just, you know, tripped and fell or didn't like a toy being taken away or whatever it was. Oh, everybody just went running. Every little tear that was heard, we all went running. And we all have this element of fear. But uh, it's not like it was that first year, but it's still there. Always will be. We've experienced loss so intensely, and it certainly helps me appreciate all these doctors and nurses and medical workers that are first responders that are at the scene and see people die all the time. How oh, that must weigh on their heart. And how they push through that and still do it day after day. Hoping to save more lives than are lost. So thank you to them. Thank you. Uh, so, a decent night's sleep. I feel like today will be better. Um, not so on edge. Um... Praying for my little David. He's almost five years old. And he is not taking this quarantine thing well. Um, he needs new outlets with other kids and playgrounds and field trips and excitement. And he's not getting that. And so he's taking it out on his younger siblings and to some aggression and um, jealousy. He's having a hard time expressing himself. So I'm going to be praying extra hard for him today that he finds his way. Oh, there he goes. Screaming at somebody. I love him so much. Um, he's a little miracle boy. So... It's a phase. It's just a phase. Guaranteed. Anybody who's got the three to six year old, if he's number seven of eight kids. So I know, I know that this is a phase. And we're just going to help him through it. Uh, So that's kind of where we're at. Day two feels like a lot longer than I said last time. It's been about two and a half weeks since we've self-quarantined. Um, so we're past the point to, to say that we don't have the virus. 
but Tom still has to go to work tomorrow. He's been deemed as a carpenter, one of the essential workers, because apparently certain remodels are super important. And can't wait. So we'll do our part and you know, social distance and do all those things. And I trust. I just trust. That's all we can do. When it's out of our control, we say, Jesus, I trust in you. When I have a PTSD moment and the devil starts flooding my mind with thoughts of it's all your fault, you're going to lose your kids. I mean, I won't go there right now another thing but I just stop I focus on Jesus and I say Jesus I trust in you and this peace comes over me because he's with us all the time always all the time so there's there's no reason to fear no reason to get anxious things will out of our control will simply happen and we just use our God-given talents and spirit and ability and charity and everything we are deep in your faith deep in your prayer um, hang on to hope be charitable towards your family towards others if you can if you have to leave, be charitable towards those people. See everyone as Christ. Have Christ as your focus. And form that relationship so deeply with Jesus that you have no doubts that he will take care of you. Financial anxieties? I've been trusting in the Lord in that a long time, and we've had many reasons to worry about finances Tom off work for six months at a time growing family up to eight kids and um, God bless the little ones in heaven that many years ago I just let go and said God I trust you to take care of that and I will do my best to be responsible on my end and he has provided every time. Don't worry about those things. If you trust and you pray, he will help you find a way. It'll be okay. So, I'm going to go attend mass in my living room with my greeters and ushers and altar server and we're just going to absorb ourselves in Jesus this morning and spend the rest of the day loving each other playing games tending to our home and each other this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen.